Hi guys, uh, today we're going to look at getting started in with cutting steel. Uh, we'll run through the various options going from uh, hacksaw through to grinders, through to chop saws, uh, a bandsaw then for the, the more heavier uh, gauge stuff and then we look at plasma cutting at the end. Now the object of this video isn't to tell you that you need to go out and rush out and buy a plasma cutter but what I want to do is just go through each option and maybe outline the benefits or the pros and cons of each option and maybe some of the pricing with it or price indications more than anything um, and just Give you an awareness of what's out there that will say if you are trying to make up benches or shelving or something like that and you're hand cutting the the tubing or the square profile with a, a handheld grinder you'll find that it's a bit wonky afterwards and it's not quite as precise as you'd like it you, you can see why that will be and why you'd upgrade to a chop saw then or something where you can get a more precise cut or a more consistent cut so anyway we'll start off with the the, the, the most basic and the cheapest uh, this is Hacksaw, this is a Baco brand Hacksaw. Um, I took out a new blade just so that we could actually read what's written on it. Uh, this is um, 12 inch, so that's a 300 mil blade here in front of me. This is a bimetal and it has 24 teeth per inch. So basically the bimetal ones, what they are is sort of a quite a strong spring steel. And then there's high speed steel teeth. I don't know how they put them on there. They're either sintered on or um, electron beam etched. Uh, I'm not too sure the process there. Um, hacksaw blades come in three varieties. There's these bimetal ones, which are sort of a crossover between, as I said, the spring or die steel um, with much harder teeth. Some of them are what are called um, high carbon steel. And then there's other ones which are high speed steel. The high speed steel ones are the most expensive. They last the longest. The bimetal ones are sort of a mid-range or a crossover. And then the high carbon steel ones are just quite a hard blade. Uh, the teeth have a tendency to, to break off a bit easier, but they are cheaper then as a result of that. So basically, right, here we have a, band, or a hacksaw. We'll pull back a bit now so we can see what we're doing. Um, it's held in just, just by tension. And what you'll find is that there's little pegs here down the bottom of the blade. We'll hold that in. Just there's a little peg, and then there's another one at the base of the handle. And you'll note as well that there's one on the bottom of the handle, and that the little mechanism here for keeping the front of the blade in can actually swivel around. So in this particular instance, with this blade, you can actually mount sideways if you are trying to cut into a, a, a flush with a, a surface or something like that. Now this particular one, and they come in different varieties and styles where they tighten from the back or tighten from the front or uh, they have this uh, lever mechanism for tightening them, but they're all pretty much the same. Uh, two pegs holding the teeth in or the blades in and then some method of putting tension on the blade. This particular one came with a key and that key should sort of sit in the front there all the time. Uh, for some reason this one has uh, probably stretched the blade slightly and this is bottoming out in this and it doesn't stay on. but. Just keep it next to it anyway for tightening or loosening. Now, what I'm going to do here, oh sorry, before I move on, there is a smaller version as well. This is called a junior hacksaw and that's a six inch blade. And I think um, that the blades, I have a pack of them here. Uh, replacement junior hacksaw blades, 153, 153 millimeters, which is about six inches. Uh, and these are 32 TPI, so that's uh, teeth per inch. And these are called ideal for cutting metal spring steel blade with precision mill teeth for longer life and improved cutting accuracy and i'll just show you one of those there before we move on so um, same principle again except the little pegs on these teeth are on the blade i don't know whether that'll catch that or not now and uh, those little teeth slot into a little hole at the front of the hacksaw and another one at the back and the tensioning mechanism is the same just to just to give you an idea now what i'm going to do take out the phone uh, put the timer on it and what, what i'll do is i'll just cut through this bit of rebar here and i'll just grab a calipers and we'll check what size that rebar is okay that's 8.14 so that's 8 mil rebar and um, and what's that in imperial for our imperial friends uh convert it in so 516 so that'll just give you an idea so we'll take out the phone set up the timer and uh run through 
how long it takes to to do this so uh, stopwatch stopwatch yes okay i'll stick that there so you should be able to see that roughly and what we'll do is we'll start okay oh Right, we have 37.95, so 38 seconds there um, that it took us to, to do that at a good clip. And as you can see, you don't want to be getting through a sort of a half inch stock or anything like that. That's not what these are designed for. So what we'll do now is we'll re-secure that there. We'll reset this, grab a pair of glasses, and we'll time how long this takes to cut with a cordless, cordless grinder. Okay, start. So, about 11 or 12 seconds thereabouts. So you can see how easy it is to use the grinder on uh, cutting any sort of sizable steel at all, or the advantages that that would have on cutting sizable steel. Now we're back at the desk and after reviewing the footage from the shed I realised that I missed a few things. Uh, number one, I'm going to stick up a picture on screen there of the, the hacksaw which is designed for cutting into restricted areas. It's called a mini hacksaw and it clamps on to uh, effectively one end of the blade. Um, the other item that I missed as well was uh, just talking briefly about the number of teeth uh, per inch on the blades. Now generally speaking um, hacksaw blades will come in 14, 18, 24 and 32 teeth per inch and broadly speaking the 14 teeth per inch they're quite spread out they're for soft materials like aluminium or copper or stuff like that and um, the 18 teeth per inch are generally regarded as sort of a, a general use 24 which uh, these particular ones are are uh, designed for cutting steel up to five six mil thereabouts or plate steel plate up to five or six mil um or you can go slightly larger if you're cutting sort of round stuff um, and then the 32 teeth per inch are designed for cutting tubing and um, let's say water pipes or copper pipes or stuff like that where you need quite a fine cut and obviously the more teeth per inch the finer the cut you get whereas the the lower teeth per inch will give you a much more coarse cut now um i did forget as well to show you that on the front of this blade and we'll stick it up there there's an arrow there indicating which direction to orient the blade in that's important um because i did say that will say when you're using these blades you cut on the forward stroke and then drag back Now, with the, the junior hacksaw blades, which are these six inch ones, there's no markings whatsoever on those. So you'll have to do a bit of a sort of detective work, whip out your magnifying glass, have a look, probably against the white background, find which direction teeth are pointing in. I'll stick it down there and then maybe get a marker and uh, draw a dot or something which indicates the front of the blade, just to cover it off yourselves. Now, before I go, um, I'm going to cut these videos into chapters. So this chapter is obviously going to be cutting steel with a hacksaw. Um, there's about maybe five or six minutes of footage there, plus a, a roundup. And rather than turn cutting steel into this epic three hour long feature, I said I'll cut into chapters. So this is chapter one, and the next one will be a, a reciprocating saw, which we'll have a look at and see the advantages and disadvantages of it there. Okay, if you have any questions, by the way, stick them in the comments down there and uh, I'll answer them if I can. All right, thanks.